One of the things people really seem to like about Soul Searcher is the lighting. They ask, how did you shoot this on DV? It looks like film. Um, so, how did I get that filmic look? Well, I have to confess, it's really, really easy. And in 10 minutes time, you'll be able to do it too. Welcome to the 10 minute lighting masterclass. What kit did I use for Soul Searcher? I must have had a bunch of HMIs, right? Wrong. This is what I had. Four Arri lights, two at 1000 watts or 1Ks, and two at 800 watts. Three battered old redheads, they're 800 watts too. Uh, and a 5000 watt Fresnel, which had a really crappy output considering how much power it sucked up. That was it for actual film lamps, but I also invested in a bunch of 500 watt work lights, uh, 4 dollars from any good DIY store, and some fluorescent tubes. Uh, the fluorescents were pretty expensive, about 30 quid each, but they looked great on location. Ask around, you may be able to borrow some. It's always interesting to see light sources in shot, and those DIY lamps look great in industrial settings, park flower beds, garages, etc. Smoke machines are also worth their weight in gold, and you can pick these up for about 50 quid. Okay, now let's go back to those dedicated film lamps and look at a simple setup. Many books and courses on lighting will talk about a three-point lighting setup which is where you have a key light, more or less in front of the subject, a backlight providing rim light, and a fill light filling in the shadows on the face. The lamps are all around head height or just above. So that's how to light someone if you're shooting EastEnders. What you want to do if you're shooting a movie is turn off the fill. Instantly looks more moody. Bring the backlight in closer and it looks even better. This is essentially how I lit the whole of Soul Searcher. Here the key light and the backlight are both off the left of frame. Here the key is way out to the left behind the fence and the backlight is off right. Here the backlight is off left, so directly behind Gary there, and the key is off right inside the cafe. Here the key is off left and the backlight off right. Rain really needs backlight or it just won't show up. Here I'm using two backlights, one off to each side, plus of course the key quite near to the camera, and a fourth lamp which is trained on the back wall. Here I've got two backlights and a red gelled key which is off to the left. Notice how I'm putting fairy lights and all kinds of light sources in the background to make it more interesting. Um, here I've got two backlights and no key, but an additional lamp on the background. One thing to look out for is exposure. Air on the side of too dark, because when highlights blow out on DV they look really bad. You can vary the angle of the key light depending on the tone of the scene. So, for an ultra moody look, put the key right off to the side, leaving the opposite side of the face black or have it slightly closer to the front so that on one side of the face it just lights up the eye and nothing else. Or, at the other end of the scale, put the key right next to the camera in romantic scenes to get a flawless look. I plan to light Heather this exact same way for every scene where she's a ghost, regardless of how her surroundings were lit. Look, I did it here, but unfortunately it proved impractical in the end. Put the key in really close and add a sheet of tough spun diffuser, or two or three, uh, for nice soft nose shadows. Okay, I admit it, sometimes I used a fill light, but as you can see I kept it right back so the shadows are still pretty dark. The main thing to remember is, the more you keep the light coming in from the sides and behind rather than in front, the moodier it will look. However, it's best to avoid putting lamps in these zones to the side of and slightly behind the subject. It's not quite behind enough to be backlight and it doesn't make for a very attractive key. Saying that, I did break this rule once or twice on Salt Searcher. Shadows are your friends. These shadows on the wall are cast by pieces of card hanging in front of the lamp to vaguely represent a window frame. Here I've broken up the white wall by making the plant cast a shadow. Often you'll need to flag your backlight. This means casting a shadow from the backlight on the lens to stop it flaring into the lens. 
The best thing is a piece of card clamped to a stand or gaffer tape to a stand. But if it's a quick shot, you can always use your hand or a crew member's body. The trick is not to cast a shadow on your subject and not to get the flag in shot. Uh, yes, moving swiftly on. Here's a great setup you can use for dialogue scenes between two characters using just two lamps. It's essentially the same as my two point setup, but arranged around two people and accommodating to three obvious camera angles that you would shoot a scene like this from. Uh, so the two shot, close up A and close up B. Each lamp acts as the backlight for one subject's close up and the key light for the other. And in the two shot, you get backlight coming in from both sides, leaving the near side of the subjects in moody darkness. Don't be afraid of coloured lighting, but make sure you plan out a colour scheme beforehand, because you don't want it to look like a school disco with multicoloured light coming from all directions. For Soul Searcher, I chose a fire and ice colour scheme, with reds creeping in as the film progresses. It's also carried through into the costumes and production design. The warm colours of the cafe were produced by placing half orange gels on the lights. The blue exteriors were produced by tricking the camera's white balance. Now normally you would point the camera at a white piece of paper while holding the white balance button and the camera would electronically calibrate its colour reproduction using the white as a base. But if you press the button while pointing the camera at a red gelled lamp, the camera compensates by turning everything cyan. This works better with some cameras than others. Now, moving lights are a great way to make a scene look more dynamic. Obviously, the real amber light on top of the street sweeper was nowhere near powerful enough to create this effect. So our multi-talented gaffer Colin rigged up something using a spinning pole taped to a piece of card with foil over it. These are ordinary 100 watt bulbs in the train wagon and the flicker effect is created by a crew member pulling the plug in and out. Try not to electrocute yourself. In some shots we use the good old leaf blower to blast the bulbs about for added effect. <laughs> and moving lights are of course essential in poor man's process. Uh, that's where you create the illusion of a moving vehicle by travelling lights past a static subject. Or, as we did for the entire train sequence, Wave a piece of card past your key lamp in a windmill fashion. And don't forget to shake the camera a lot. A couple of scenes in Soul Searcher I approached by lighting the location, then blocking the action so the actors were always lit sufficiently. Dante's lair was lit this way, with arrow lamps throwing shafts of light through the windows, and fluorescent tubes dotted about. The smoke adds depth and texture, but it needs wafting a lot to get the right look. <coughs> For this sequence, the lamps were all placed on the gantry above, pointing straight down, one between each fat. I also had a small lamp on a stand that I could position on a shot-by-shot -shot basis if I needed fill, like here in this shot. The car park I barely lit at all, uh, left the overhead fluorescence to do most of the work, uh, but here Joe's lit by a redhead, then he turns, and now he's lit by an overhead tube. There is a slight difference in colour, the fluorescence being uh, greener than the tungsten lamp, but ultimately, who cares? One of your chief enemies in lighting on a micro budget is power. Remember your GCSE physics, amps times volts equals watts. So, an ordinary 13 amp socket on a 240 volt British ring main gives you 3120 watts, which is enough for three redheads and a DIY lamp, say. Try plugging in four redheads and something like this will happen. Uh, what's going on is the lights all suddenly went off. Um, nothing's tripped on the generator. We think it's probably a fuse in the extension lead. I've got to get some gaffer tape to sort it out. We melted a plug while shooting at Dante's lair and had to gaffer tape it up so we could finish the night's filming. Check the fuse box of your location beforehand and add up the total wattage of the lamps you want to use. Are you going to blow a fuse? Are you going to have to hire a generator to meet your power requirements? Can you afford to do that? Do you have the right plugs for the generator sockets? My final tip is buy lots, lots of extension leads. It's a law of the universe that you'll always need one more extension lead than you actually have. Okay, your 10 minutes is up.